Gun, Transformers, uh, my personal favourite, Flash. Uh, you've done a lot of cartoon voice acting, you've been Drax, haven't you? Drax, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, so you've done all sorts. We've got Adrian. Uh, Adrian Bowles, you have been in King's Blade, haven't you? Which is Final Fantasy XV. It was the movie, and you voiced in the game as well, didn't you? No, just of the movie. Okay. But you did a lot of motion capture and stuff like that, didn't you? So you, yeah. Which is really interesting. So, uh, so these guys are both also really great, and we've got a really diverse range of experiences. So we have got appearing kind of, for lack of a better word, traditional acting for you on screen as yourself. Uh, we have got voice acting. We got motion capture, which is all very different. Ah, Russell. Sorry. And uh, I'm Liam. Uh, I was also in Kingsley, uh, did on motion capture, did the voice. Uh, Oh, fantastic, thank you. I as well was in Kingslave, but I just said a few words on the radio. Excellent. Okay, guys, do we have any questions for any of them first? I've got loads, so if you haven't, I'm going to be asking them. But please, anyone? Okay, I've got a question first of all I have to ask. This is something I've really always wondered, and it's for David, okay? So David, uh, as I said, one of my favourite roles of yours is Gorilla Grodd in The Flash. But, when they put Gorilla Grodd in The Flash, it was, for us fans, really exciting. But a little bit unexpected, because at that point they were trying to be really grounded, quite serious, and then they had a talking gorilla. <laughs> so my question, were you familiar with that character? Or did they come to you and be like, we've, we've got Flash, you know, it's a big CW TV show, we want you to be a psychic talking gorilla. <laughs> How was that? Did you kind of know about it? Is it one of your stranger roles? It is one of my stranger roles, and I, I did not know anything about it before. Um, I tend to not really research much. I want to just jump in and make it new, and, and make it in the moment. And yeah, it was weird, but you know, I didn't play him as a gorilla. He was the person who didn't know what he was. He was just a lot of emotions going on. He was kind of tortured. Uh, and then later on, he develops a sense of anger and a sense of uh, betrayal. He felt betrayed, and then. That's his driving force later on. But at first, it's kind of sad. Wonders where he came from. Seeing it's quite a sympathetic character, we actually had to change one of the episodes about six days before it aired because he seemed too sympathetic. That's never good. Okay, guys, has anyone got any questions at the moment? You might have to shout because I'm going I'm to tell you a secret. I can't see a lot. Uh, okay. Guys, so, uh, I want to ask you guys a question as well. I'm really interested in how the motion capture works. So, can you walk us through the basic process of that? Are you wearing all the little golf balls? Are you in green suits? How, how does it work? Pay attention to different It's a new technology, and you are in what's known as a volume, which is about a sort of a tennis court size area of a, of a room, of a factory, of a studio. It has a whole load of sensors on all the walls. And these sensors detect the dots on your costume. So they can put you anywhere in that volume and translate that position onto a computer. And you orient yourself within that space by doing a series of um, exercises that tells the computer where you are, and then the computer can put your face, or somebody else's face, or whatever face, or whatever costume it likes, onto the movement of those dots in that space. And it means that with conventional filming, you have to set up a, a camera on a rig, on a head, on a dolly, or a track, or whatever, and you're quite limited to what you can do in that one shot. But because you have complete 360 degree autonomy from all of these detectors. You can put your camera at any position and do anything with it. If your shot wants to go in a big circle or a spiral or through somebody's legs, that's what you can do. Um, and you only have to shoot it once. Um, so it's a very powerful technique. Uh, and it's becoming more and more prevalent, more and more people using it. How challenging is it, acting with no sets, no costumes, everyone 
presumably looking a little bit silly, covered in balls and green suits. Do you find it, is it more challenging than regular acting or do you find it quite easy to slip into? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just say, uh, I thought it might be at first, but um, it is, there are a few technical things and maybe we'll be able to talk to those. Yeah, it's, it's very similar to Nord, it's just kind of another fallback to it. It's the same as if you're in theatre or film, you adjust a bit, but it's still, the, the basics are still the same. There are technical issues with it, things like, um, one of the things you often see in the behind the scenes stuff is the head cameras. So you've got essentially a, a, a series of facial cameras strapped to your head, which means that you've got an extra bit of metal sticking out to about, about this far from your face. It's about another sort of nine inches. 10 inches away from you, um, which means if we're talking like this and turn to talk to each other, we just smash them off each other. So you have to kind of adjust for that. Um, and then there's things like if you, you can't put anything in between your face and the camera, because if you do that, then they can't track the dots. Uh, so if you get things like uh, food, uh, or you're taking pills, or you're talking into a radio, or anything like that, you have to do it outside of the camera. Um, essentially do the same motion, so you, take, you pick up your cup and you do it to here, to outside the cameras, and then they um, adjust the dots in, in post when they're actually doing the, the process to make it work. But yeah, as, it, it's very similar to any other acting. The nice thing, is, as Adrian already talked about, is you don't have to worry about making sure you're hitting your, your marks and your lines necessarily relating to one camera, because they can literally take the scene from any direction. Uh, they can do all the cuts, everything they need from that one shot. Um, and equally, if, if they decide that actually they want to do this shot here, but they want to be able to see Adrian, but I'm in the way, they can literally pick my dots up and just shift me out of the way. So they don't even have to reshoot it to make sure that you're in the right place. They can just physically pick your model up and move it. Um, so that, that gives us a lot of freedom, because it means we can kind of do what we want to do for the character, rather than having to worry about necessarily the technical aspects. Thank you. Have we got any questions yet? Anybody? I'm going to carry on asking questions if you guys don't, so it's fine. But, okay. Uh, Alright, Toby, I've got a question for you as well, actually. Well, I've got two. One's quite a more serious question, one's a silly one. I'm ask the silly one first, which is, where did they shoot your Game of Thrones scenes? Because they shoot most of it in Ireland, don't they? Most of it's done in Belfast. Yeah. Um, they've got a whole, uh, they've got a huge set there. For the Titanic Studios, which is absolutely massive, and the bulk of it's done there. And then I was in, they also shoot in Croatia, Spain, Iceland, I think, and I was in uh, Seville um, and in Spain. See, so, yeah, I, I thought that looked too nice to be anywhere in the UK. Yeah, I got really lucky. Yeah, I was thinking that. If you're not, if you're not in the north, you yeah, know, then you're fine, really. Well, you were you going to have to go to the north? Or, or, you're going to King's Landing, weren't you? Would I you don't like think I'd ever make my character go to the north. It's too much of a win. I think that would kill him off first. Were you, were you disappointed you didn't get a fight scene, by the way? Because it was kind of building up to one, wasn't it? And then, and then you get stabbed in the back. I, I mean, I, I never really expected to have a fight scene because um, from the get-go, like, when I read when I read the character, he just didn't seem like he had it inside of him. I didn't I mean, I didn't expect him to be such a win. Uh, but maybe they saw me and they changed the character description. <laughs> It's just the unwritten rule of Game of Thrones. If you're nice, you die pretty quickly. <coughs> Anyone who's not evil people you. have died too. Yeah. Charles Dance died. Yeah. Took him a while though. Took him a while. Yeah. So, uh, other question I had is, uh, so what was it like working with some of the other actors? So you were working with Nicholas, forget his surname, the guy who played Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? Was that? He's lovely, and I also love working with Jerome. Flynn, of course. Brought, yes. Ron's actually my favourite character by far. Is he? Really. Why is that? I just love that he's quite straight talking. Quite, he's like he's like Han Solo of Game of Thrones, which I love. He's, he's really, I love the good rogue characters. So yeah, was, so you obviously worked with them. That was great. Um, and you worked with the girl who played Miss Marcella a lot. Nail Tiger Three. Yeah. Yeah. She was lovely as well. Um, I was really lucky. I mean, I didn't work with a lot of people. I also, all of my filming was really over um, three weeks. So I, I think I did three weeks in Spain, and then I did a couple days in Belfast. Um, but you know, people, 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 people coming out to me saying, you know, what was Kit Harrison like, and what was yeah. uh, Lena Headley, like, I was like, I've never met them. You know. 
everyone assumes that because you're on the same show that you will hang out with each other, but unfortunately it's not that way. I do know that's a, that's the fact that the actor who played Ron, isn't it? He refuses to see them. The, the, the exes, yeah. I read, I read on IMDb, it must be true. That apparently they're exes and they fell out quite badly and he's, he's in their Game of Thrones contract that they would really? never be on set together. Wow. This is according to IMDb, so I assume it's true. Does that make it true? I don't know. If it's on the internet, it must be true, isn't it? Yeah, I was yeah, going to say, yeah. I thought you just... <laughs> I swear people just like tap in and you know, have some fun. Like people right now are going like, oh, let's go and like, let's go and build on that story. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, right, okay, I'm going to... I'm moving down the line asking questions until anybody here has any questions. Anyone? No? I'm going to carry on. So, uh, David, I've got an interesting question. This is going to be one about something I don't know a lot about. So, I know it's going to shock you guys, but I'm a bit of a geek. I mean, you never guess. But, one thing I'm not really up to date is modern video games. I used to play a lot when I was a kid, but I don't know. So, you were in, this, you were in Fortnite, which, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is pretty popular, isn't it? Guys, have any of you guys played Fortnite? Yes. Um, yeah, I, apparently it is, we'll find out. Yes. Yeah. So, the character's only been around for about three weeks. Ah, so he's new, he's the DLC one, he's the download one. No, 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 there's the season nine, they have different uh, seasons. Okay. So the season nine came out when the Dark Knight Garrett and became part of it. The Russian character. Ah, excellent. And I, I don't know if this is a floss, uh, floss dance body, <laughs> but I gotta learn. <laughs> I think that's what they expect. Yeah, so... so yeah, that's actually what I wanted to ask. Is, uh, so, obviously, you came to be quite Fortnite. And to me, it always surprised me just how popular video games are getting now. Like, the fact that they seem to trump films and stuff. I mean... Fortnite has 250 million users. There you go. So, did you know that going in? Have you been really surprised by the reception? Or were you sort of prepared for it? Well, I knew it was a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, you don't really know what your impact is in any of the stuff we do until you get out to the public. Yeah. You come to these conventions and people come up and they're interested. You find out what's popular and find out what isn't. Uh, yeah, a lot of people talking about Fortnite today, for sure. Yes, it's definitely very popular. Does anyone have any questions about Fortnite? No. Do you, do you have a question? No? Oh, okay. That's Minecraft. I know that. That's Minecraft. But that's not Fortnite. I, I know a video game. Okay, I've got another question that I'm interested in. I, I'm always interested in what happens when you pick up characters that have been popularized by somebody else. So, you're Drax in the Guardians of the Galaxy part 2. Now, it's a really interesting one because... Ten years ago, she said the name Drax. Not even I knew who he was, and I'm a bit of a geek. He's a very obscure character who's become very, very popular. Uh, when you started to play that role, did you find yourself having to copy what Dave Barista did, or no, did you get a bit of your own spit? Interesting you should ask that. I was cast before he was cast. Ah. Animation takes a long time. So it was about a year and a half before he was cast when I started doing it. And we started doing guest roles on all the different Marvel shows. And then we finally ended up doing the series. They call it a feel-alike. So my character feels like a character that you see in the movie, but we're not even trying to sound like a yeah, right. similar voice, but yeah. a different delivery. That makes sense. That's brilliant. Okay. So guys, I'm carrying on. Any other questions at the moment? I've got another slightly, it's going to sound slightly geeky question for you guys, but I've just got to, how cool is it seeing yourself in a game in CGI and seeing yourself is it weird? Do you get used to it? Are you ever like, it must be a bit different from just seeing yourself normally on screen? Um, if I talk specifically about uh, Final Fantasy, um, we didn't know. We were just... We were just ammunition, basically, for what the animators wanted to do with, with our bodies. We were told they looked. They were looking for a body type, and so we satisfied that criteria, and we were we, we were cast. And we were told that they might change our forms for the final characters, um, and then the final characters were rendered uh, on a computer, and mine was completely unchanged. I've never been so happy in my life. They used everything. It was the whole me. And the everything. It was just me. And I was the only one that really was completely unchanged. Yeah, you, had, you had a slight different haircut, I think. I had a different haircut and they increased my waistline. 
They did. No, they did. They did, because they put on the two. They did. Come on. You've lost a bit of weight since then. No, I was absolutely over the moon. Um, because it was me, and it was pretty much Liam. We didn't change your hair. Um, my mother. No, we were very happy. Leave the mullet alone. We were, we were very happy. And um, yeah, I think we were basically the only ones that didn't get changed, weren't we? And John. John stays, John's pretty similar. Um, to me, actually, but we to didn't know, we didn't expect it, we didn't expect to be um, unchanged, and we were delighted with you when we were. It, it is weird. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a gay, I'm a geek, I'm a gamer, um, and the first time, because my character then uh, wasn't in the full, the main game, but I was in the multiplayer DLC. Uh, and I'm the first character you see in that DLC. Literally, you start it up, and the first thing you hear is my voice, and then my face appears. That was weird. The film was quite weird, but we'd kind of seen stuff as we'd gone along. They'd, basically, the way it was filmed is we did sort of a week, and then had a sort of six to eight week gap, and then we'd be back in for another week, and then another gap. And, then, and basically, what they used to do is, the moment we finished filming one session, they would start working on it. So by the time we came back to come for the next one, they'd already have some of the footage done from the previous session. We, we kind of got to see it being built up as we went along. Whereas with the game, it was just, I didn't, we didn't motion capture or anything. So it was literally just into the booth, do the voice. And then the first time I saw it, I was actually on camera doing a promo for it with them. And the first time I ever saw myself in the game was on camera, me going, that's weird. That's just, that's my face. That's really odd. Um, so that was very cool. Uh, and then they then made it that you could actually use that. What, the slightly weird thing in Comrades was they had, they've got the Libertas model, um, which they made shorter and again fatter. Um, and they definitely made him shorter because I made my character the same height and Libertas turned up and I was like, <laughs> where's, where's the rest of it? Um, but they then put my face into the character creation as well. Um, and it meant that I could actually make myself in the game. For once, I actually managed to make my character look like me. Because I just went, I'll have that one, please. Um, so that's very weird, but really, really cool. And uh, yeah, mind blowing, really. Right. I'm afraid, I think you two have got a photo shoot by the looks of it, because Graham from the Con and Con. But thank you so much, guys. Thank you very, oh, very much. Thank, thanks for having me. I'm surprised yeah. no one here was asking any questions about The Last Kingdom, but uh, obviously no fans down here. No one cares. Another time. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, before we wrap up, does anyone have any questions for our guests? Anybody? Uh, well, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, please, if you want to come and talk to them, come see them at their tables. Uh, I've only really briefly touched on some of the stuff they've done. They've got a really big backlog of work, and you can find out all about it. So thank you very much, guys. Can we give them a big round of applause? Thank you.